So in this video, we're going to talk about how do you create a dynamic list in Python, not simply defining a list like as a variable, but you're basically defining an empty list and you're somehow with a function or some other way populating that list with items. But those items are unknown items and you're generating those items for the list dynamically. You don't know what are those items, but through the code, through the function, through the Python function, you somehow create the content of the list. So I'm going to show you in this video how exactly to do that in Python. If you want to find more techniques for such approach, you can find an article down below in the description that I wrote exactly about this topic and how to do that in Python. So if you want to know that, just look for the link in the description. All right, let's talk about dynamic list in Python. Lists in Python generally are very simple to do and create, but there are several things that I can show you that I'm using very often. And the things that I'm going to show you might not be obvious if you're very new to Python. So just follow along and I'm going to show you how to use lists in Python and how to dynamically create lists with functions and already built in functions into Python. So basically, by using built in functions in Python or using your own custom functions, how could you create a dynamic list in Python? So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's say you want to create a list in Python. So how do you start? You start by simple list. So there are two ways you can create a list. One is like just by using brackets and the other one is by using a built-in function called list. Let's say, let's call this one uh, the first one and this is the second one. And if we would print both of them, you would see the same result. So, yeah. So these are two ways that you usually create a list. But let's say you wanna create a list with some kind of items in it. So usually what you would do, you would add item one, let's say item two, you want a, an integer, maybe you want a float uh, number and stuff like that. You could just create items in a list at the moment when you are defining the list. For the second one, you kind of do the same thing. You, you can pass some kind of iterable, which means that you're passing some kind of list or a string so yeah, these are two ways that you can define list when you already know what kind of items you have. And the difference, I guess, for the second function is, like I'm not using the, the second one that often, but the, the difference is that you can pass some kind of iterable and sometimes this built-in function is useful when you're working with like dynamic elements and when you want to pass some kind of variable. So for example, if I would want to pass a string here, what will happen if I run this code? I'm getting a list of each character in a string because string actually in Python is a reiterable and you can like iterate over it. So that's how you get two lists. Okay, but these two cases are very obvious and they are very simple. But what if you don't know what kind of elements you want to have in the list? Or what if you are working with data and you have to somehow dynamically create the list? What would you do then? So let's say you have some kind of code does something, but then you decide you want to add more you want to add one more item to the first list. You use a pen function. Very simple. You can see that we have more element in the list now. So that's also a very obvious approach, very simple approach. But sometimes you don't want to append at the end of the list. But let's say you want to append at the beginning. So how would you do that? Or somewhere in the middle? Well, you have to know the index of the place where you want to insert the element and you have to use insert function that that would be like you're setting here the index where it's gonna be inserted and then you can do the as the second argument you pass the insert element and in this case let's say i want to insert a string 
in here I would do index one and then the actual element that I want to insert into the list. So let's do that, see. So yeah, now you can see that instead of adding element at the end of the list, we are adding element at specific index. And in Python, indexes start with zero. So when I use one here, it's gonna add this element as the second one in the list. If I would use zero, it should be the first one. Yeah, now it's the first one. So that's how append and insert works. But sometimes you want to also add not just a single element, but let's say you want to add a bunch of elements. What to do then? Well, then you use extend function. Now let's say we have two elements yeah, with numbers. So we have a list with element one, which is numbers, element two, another number. So then in that case we can use extend function and this will extend the original list and we'll add those two elements at the end of the list and this is very useful sometimes when you're working in real projects sometimes you have multiple lists and you just want to combine them somehow in a single list and that's when you use extend function so just to give you a real life example here is feed by from one of the projects that I'm working on. Here we have a list of headers that we want and we have a condition. So document has purchases. So in a case of document having a purchases, we want to extend the original list headers, which has all these items. We want to add uh, a bunch of other items. So in this case, you would not, you could do, what you could do here is you could do headers.append and basically append each item this way but then you would have a bunch of append calls which doesn't look as good and as readable so in this case extend works better so it just depends on the situation sometimes you would use extend by actually using a real list not like defining a list inside of an extend all right, so here is another example. So we have some kind of list and we also have another list, list of country method. And we do some kind of actions with this list of country method. And you don't even see what kind of items are in this list. And maybe these are dynamic items. They change over time depending on what the user does. So you don't really know what are the items. How would you use append or insert? You're, you don't really know what kind of items are in this list. In this case, you would use extend function again. Another example how extend can be useful in real project situations. So for insert, just to have the syntax, we can add comment here and extend. I think it's obvious and append is also obvious. You just add the element and extend just extends the list. All right, so let's take a look at another example. What if you want to apply some kind of function to the whole list and do something with each element in the list. So let's say you have a very simple list with a couple of numbers and then you want to multiply each element. How would you do that? Well, you have this function multiply and this can be any kind of function. Maybe you want to do something else with each element. This is just an example. So how would you do that? So you would do for number in numbers, let's say, result multiply you're calling the function and you're passing in your number this would be one of the numbers from the list as you're iterating over each element and let's say you want to multiply it by two and then the result would be and here's the result so that's a very simple way of using like applying the function to each element in the list and somehow dynamically creating another list. While this approach with multiply function and using result here in for loop is a working example, it's not really the best approach, it's not really the best looking approach. So what else we can do? Well, in Python, there is this function called map, a built-in function. And what it does, it takes in three arguments or like multiple arguments and the first argument that it takes in is some kind of function the second argument what it takes in is some kind of iterable 
what it does it just takes each element from the list for example and applies that function applies the function to the iterable so this approach is not really the best one and in python what you can do is you can use a built-in function called map which does basically the same thing it th can use multiply numbers and then do some kind of action and this will give us a map object which if you print you'll see also we want to get the actual list and in order to turn the map object into a python list you can apply the built-in list function let's run this code and you can see that we have map object and then we have a list yeah so while this approach works the same way as the first approach that i showed you this part can be actually confusing so what this part actually does is it creates a new list it creates a new list with two like it's the same length of the list but each element in the list is two and you might ask why is that so well if we want to do the same thing as we are doing here which means basically we are multiplying each element in a list with two in order to do the same thing with map function we have to create a second list with number two so what happens is we're just like doing two times two four times two six times two and so on and so forth and that's how we get the end result yeah sorry i meant to say we're doing the same thing we are doing that with this list not uh this one this is already the result but if we would do it the same like it's the same approach it means the same thing i think you get it by this point well in python you also can use a lambda function which is like a function that you use for just one time you're not defining actual function like we did here with multiply but you're using a nemos function and you're assuming that this function will take in one of the numbers and then you're going to do something with the number from the list so this could also be not just uh, x but it could be number if we do it properly and then yeah if we run the code we get each number squared not just times but squared if i if we would want to just time it like in a previous answer that would be just two four six eight ten you might ask where is this used in a real world well one of the simplest examples is that let's say you have some kind of list with words and you just want to change each word to uppercase characters how would you do that well you can do do it with the map function you can use lambda and you can just apply some kind of function to each element in a list and this is how you do it yeah so you can see that we went from having each element in a list as lowercase to uppercase another example in python how to do the same approach is by using list comprehensions in order to achieve the same result we can do if you want to use list comprehensions in python first of all you define the list and then in a list what you can do is how i memorize all this is when you look into the first example is you do for number notice that i'm doing this inside of the list for number in numbers and then instead of doing something here at the bottom of the for loop you're moving to the top and here i would call multiply pass number basically you're just taking this part and moving it into here now if i would print this result it would already give you a list with each element multiplied so let's try see each element multiplied another interesting case would be how do you fill an array in python with a function so let's say you have some kind of uh, situation where you need to generate array or list in python based on some kind of argument or like you need to dynamically create the array and what you can do is you can define some kind of function so let's say for example we define a function fill array and let's say we do some kind of size and then into the function what you would do is you would define values let's say define an empty list 
and do something for let's say number in range size which will let you dynamically create some kind of number and let's say you want to do something with each number from the size what you can do is you do append uh, number plus one or i don't know you can do something with the size there are a lot of ways how you can achieve a similar thing and this can also be another function not just a built-in range function and you could create a dynamic list in this way so but just to continue with this very simple example then you would return values from the list which would mean you're turning a list here and then you can do my array field array let's say size seven and if we just print out my array you get the array with some kind of size now let's say i want to change the size and do that so this really depends on what you are trying to achieve, what kind of project you're building and what exactly you want to do. But there are many ways how you can uh, move forward with this. And you can do also like times two, I don't know, or maybe squared even and get completely different result. If you actually build a real project, there are many things that you can do, many things how you can manipulate uh, lists in Python. I just gave you a couple of examples. But yeah, if you actually want to build your own projects and actually want to become a Python developer, you can discuss uh, your situation. Maybe I will be able to help you out. If that's something you're interested in, find my contact details below the video description and just send me an email send me a message tell me about your situation and i will see if i can do anything for you and i can help you in any way to become a software developer uh, a python developer so yeah just look for my contact details below and send me a message if you're interested